For the betrayed investigation, what we did was try to find a new path to quantify the prevalence of sexual violence uh, in a big public school system. We ultimately dug out 523 uh, police reports of sexual assault or abuse of a young person inside of a Chicago public school and then set out to verify and corroborate those reports. We found that uh, uh, there was a hidden pattern of sexual violence in Chicago public schools. The number of, of cases were simply staggering. Uh, the cases had been hidden. And we, when we started to dig out uh, case by case what was going on, we found that there were patterns of harm again and again where child protective uh, measures had utterly failed or been disregarded. We also dug out some really, really horrible cases like the uh, uh, track coach who had four felony convictions when he was brought on, who had molested nine of his runners, including his star athlete who he violently raped. We understood early on that there were gonna be ethical challenges in dealing with survivors of sexual abuse and assault. Uh, we had regular conversations to make sure we were on the same page and how to, uh, how to approach those victims and those survivors, um, how to speak with them, and, and who to speak with, frankly. Um, we decided early on that we were not going to be in the business of convincing these young people uh, to talk to the newspaper and to you know, go before a camera or to put their names out there. For those survivors who did choose to tell us their stories, we were very clear with them about what that would mean, that their stories, and in many cases, you know, their names that they chose to provide those and, and say those publicly, um, would be in print and online, and that many, many people would see those. We also gave them the power at any point to tell us that they didn't want to do this. And we meant that you know, up until the time that we published. So at the 11th hour, if they changed their minds and decided they were not comfortable with their story being so widely, you know, widely declared uh, in our journalism, um, they could tell us that and we would not publish and we meant it. And that can be a very difficult thing for a newsroom to promise and uphold. But our editor stood behind it and we stood behind that, that philosophy. We also uh, explained to the young people that we were going to corroborate and verify their stories, really to independently report them as best we could, and to make sure that they understand that that was part of the process. I think with any good journalism, you can, on the front end, decide that you're going to be transparent about the process, about the reporting process and what you as a reporter are going to be doing. Um, to corroborate stories and to and to get to the truth uh, and I think it's equally important that you sort of internalize the idea that we shouldn't necessarily <laughs> be in the business of convincing people to put themselves in harm's way or to make themselves uncomfortable and this is particularly true with survivors of sexual abuse and assault you know the power has to be with them and we have to respect that and not urge them to speak when it causes them harm.